All right, folks, I have been tinkering around with a few things here this morning, configurations and everything else. I'm going to I'm going to give Eve Online another shot. Um, I have previously tried this game twice. Both times I was at a different place in my life mentality wise. I wasn't doing content creation full time. You know, I was just dabbling here and there. Um, I think the last time I tried it was about five years ago four or five years ago and then before that about four or five years prior to that I tried it um, and each time I gave it about two weeks and enjoyed it but I also wasn't in the mindset right like I was still very much into like EverQuest, Lord of the Rings Online, EverQuest 2, World of Warcraft, Star Wars Old Republic that kind of thing um, and my tastes have changed over the years it's kind of like um, right now I'm finally starting to get into turn-based gameplay because Baldur's Gate 3 pushed me in that direction and made me realize that there actually are some really good turn-based games out there and I should give them a shot and I think it was um, the lazy peon maybe somebody did a video really recently it popped up in my feed a couple of days ago um, Eve online in 2023 like 20 years on or however long it's been since the game launched and I watched the video and I was like you know what this looks really good and I'm just now coming off of Starfield I've got about two more sessions left to wrap that up and I know it's not the same thing it's not the same as like Starfield or what like Elite Dangerous or, or what you know Star Citizen Squadron 42 are offering but it does have a killer soundtrack I remember that much and it and it has a science fiction vibe which I appreciate I don't care about the PvP I really don't I just I'm looking for something chill to relax in and sort of, you know, have a fun stream game that I could play once or twice a week around the other things that I do, which are very much heavy RPG centric shooters, you know, and more action oriented. So I'm going to give EVE Online a shot. So this is kind of serving as my EVE Online in 2023 um, video to sort of get myself up to speed with where it's at and see if it sticks this time. Um, I did play around a little bit this morning with uh, Renfield will be, end up being my main character, but I was having some performance issues, and I think it was because they they were apparently doing something with the servers. Because like the second character I started Aaron Deal, I didn't have the issues, and then the servers went down. So they and then I noticed a message that they were doing migrations, and they said there was going to be some performance hiccups. So we're going to see if I can actually get this to work this time around. So I'm going to create a brand new character. Um, I've already gone through all these, so I know that I want to do Galente. It doesn't really matter as far as I'm understanding things other than just giving you a little bit of roleplay flavor. I like the idea of these guys being the um, peoples united by ideals of freedom and democracy, um, splitting from the corporate government. Um, but you can uh, check the different ships if you want to go through here and see what the ship styles look like um, for the different uh, factions. Honestly, I do like the way the uh, the Kaldari ships look, but it's kind of creepy working for the for the Federation, uh, for the for the corporations, I should say. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Galentes because why not? Um, dun, 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 dun. One of the largest ethnicities, prominent. Let's just do a regular Galentian. <coughs> character creation here um I mean honestly I don't think this matters too much because most of what we're getting in terms of the um, characters is just the headshots because it's all about the ships right uh, but I did go through this earlier so I want to put some boots on get some different pants yeah and then maybe we'll go with what do we got for tops? I didn't see tops earlier. I guess that's if I want, if I even want to have this. Or I can go with like a jacket. That's a little too, uh, that's not bad. Um, I think I might go with that one. No, that's not bad. I like the brown one. This is cool. Mid layer, does it matter? And then I think we'll just go with that. Can I get rid of the mid layer? I can. You can totally get rid of the mid layer. Um, well, let's go. If I 
want something a little different. Tank top underneath. All right, I like that. Get some different tones going on. What about my pants? I want some different colored pants. Ooh, I like those. Those are nice. All right, I could dig it. Um, headwear. I mean, honestly, the hairstyles are not that big of a deal to me. So let's just go next. Now, because this is the character I'm doing for the start, um, we're just gonna call him and fail the test because I'm just doing this to do the actual tutorial, which I did play earlier today, but I was having the performance issues, so I just want to run through it with everybody. Um, because I think that it is, it does offer a pretty interesting, um, first look. I'm very, I'm genuinely curious if I'm still going to have the performance issues that I was seeing earlier. So hopefully I've fine tuned it. If there are any hiccups, you could blame it on my old laptop. <clears throat> Eden, a universe brimming with possibility and rife with adventure. Only the most intrepid capsuleers can conquer its Definitely a couple wonders. of hiccups there. Do you have what it takes to become one with a machine? To explore the far reaches of space, carving out a name for yourself among the stars. To become a titan of industry, amassing wealth, power, and prestige as you rise above your rivals. Or to prove your worth in combat, cementing new alliances and vanquishing your foes on your path to glory. For the rare few, immortality awaits. Immortality. With Air's Capsuleer training program, you <coughs> become the architect of your own destiny. All right. Hopefully I've got all the kinks worked out, everybody. It's been a long morning. I've been up since about 2 o'clock in the morning. We had some... Uh, Homestead woes, lost a couple more little baby chicks. It's been a bit of chaos this morning. But I think Greetings, Captain. I am Aura, your AI companion. I am here to help you find your way through New Eden. This all looks amazing. Welcome by the way. to the first day. For a, of your I mean, new when did this game come out? Like, it's been. 20-ish years, right? I'll look it up here in a minute. I don't, I don't want to I am now transferring your pod into a if I ship. tab out, it might Provided freak by out. Air, as part of your caps... But I've got a older laptop with a 1080 in it, and it definitely... There were some performance issues when I was going this one. I was genuinely surprised. Because I remember when I played about 4 or 5 years ago, I was on this same rig, and I didn't have any of this issues, so they, I think they've improved things over the years and added more stuff to it. I've just got to fine tune the settings for my, for my rig, because I'm not on a high-end PC. We definitely saw some hiccups in that early cutscene, and I don't know, because that's supposed to be a pre-rendered thing, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. But it's all good. We're, we're, we're here. We got, we got, we're getting it sorted. Ship stopping. Captain, this cloning facility was attacked before your capsule could be inserted into a ship. I initiated our evacuation sequence before we reached the hangar to avoid certain death. No need to thank me. Let me look up something real quick. I'm genuinely curious uh, when this came out. Eve Online. Cat hair everywhere. Um, Wikipedia says it came out May of 2003. Holy crap, so it is a 20-year-old game at this point. It looks amazing for a 20-year-old game. I can't think of very many 20-year-old games that look as good as this one. This baptism by fire is certainly not what Air had planned for your first day in a pod. Rest assured, I am here to help. That's pretty amazing. I'm unable to identify our attackers, but they are not currently targeting our capsule. This gives us time to locate a ship. Okay. Your pod may be able to fly through space, but, like all capsules, it is unarmed. A proper ship comes with proper weaponry. 
We must scan the debris for a space-worthy vessel. Hold down the left mouse button and move your mouse around to now, rotate the let's camera. get a better look at our surroundings. That view right over there is just pretty amazing. Um, uh, scrolling oh, out. There is a ship still capable of flight. An Astero, no less. Man, you can go a way fine out. ship indeed. Alright, click on the highlighted ship. I have highlighted the navigation section of your display. Use it to approach the ship. So we're going to click approach, and this should turn my pod around. That's pretty awesome. Board the Astero now. Board ship. That thing looks pretty cool. Our shields took significant damage in the attack. Okay. The armor is also in need of repair. I believe the appropriate idiom for this situation is, we're screwed. <laughs> Fortunately, the cavalry has arrived. <coughs> Ships bearing air transponders are approaching our location. Here comes the cavalry. Alan Ferris, Commander of Air Security. All ships evacuating this cloning facility are advised to rendezvous at emergency coordinates. Several thousand civilians appear to have survived the attack. Let us make haste and join the fleet Commander Ferris is organizing. Okay. Your overview will display the ships in your vicinity. Select Balin's ship in the overview. Click Approach. This will swing me around and move me in that direction. Captain, your vessel looks like it's seen better days. I'll repair you once you're in range. Commander Ferris, oh, were you able awesome. to determine the identity of our attackers? Negative aura. Their transponders were cloaked and their hulls lacked any identifying information. I'd wager this was an act of corporate espionage turned violent. There are a lot of people in New Eden who want to get their hands on his technology, whatever the cost. So it's healing the damage to my hold. You guys see that? Even visually, it's healing it. That's really cool. Thanks so to Commander now it looks all repairs, pristine. Our ship is almost as good as new. At his command, we will proceed to the emergency coordinates. God, his ship looks cool, man. It's like some sort of a frigate. All ships enter warp formation. Right. Got a fleet below us. Here we go. Designated emergency evacuation zone. We'll be safe here while we regroup. Okay. A spot well chosen. This location's cosmic abnormalities will mask our warp signatures from detection. But our appreciation of New Eden's natural wonders will have to wait. This looks amazing. Captain, I could use your help. My sensors are picking up a strange signal nearby, but my forces are stretched thin defending the civilian fleet. The Cosmic Storm likes to play with our sensors, so it could be nothing. But after that attack, I'm not taking any chances. Okay. Click the anomaly and select approach. Man, it just, it looks for a 20 year old game like it's pretty it's pretty dope guys
The sound effects are really good too. I actually want to, um, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Oh yeah, we have advanced settings, so if we want to turn things up, like atmosphere. We may adjust those later on. Just to get like the exact Initiating audio scan experience we want. Signal. Captain, hostiles inbound. And away we go. We have to defend those unarmed civilian transports. All ships equipped for combat form up around me. Orbit Valen's ship. So we're going into defensive formation now. My sensors indicate that these are the same ships that attacked the cloning facility. That's a few. Several frigates are breaking away from the pack. They're targeting those civilian ships. This will be your first combat experience as a capsuleer. Okay. Time to show these hostiles what you're truly made of. Orbit the frigate first. So click the frigate, click orbit. That's going to move us in that direction. We're too far away, Captain. Thankfully, our ship is equipped with a module that will boost our speed. Activate the afterburner module highlighted on your display. My database of ancient... We're now within range. Lock your target. Target lock confirmed. Okay. Time to hit them where it hurts. Okay. Fire at will, Captain. Make sure to use both of your guns. Left click both turret modules. Which I guess sets them to auto fire. Uh, what, one thing I don't remember is, does this game have That's ammo? It, Let them have it. Like, do you have to have ammo with your guns for them to work? I don't remember. Another hostile ship incoming. A cruiser this time. It's larger and better armed than those frigates. What an exhilarating way to test your combat abilities. That cruiser is traveling fast. At its current speed, it will reach the civilian transports before we do. Okay. Use your stasis webifier to slow them down. I will walk you through the process of activating the module. First, orbit the cruiser. Okay. So it looks like our afterburner is still engaged. To ensure success, we must lock our target. Now's your chance. Activate the webifier. They're trapped in our web, Captain. Eliminate them. Okay. This also kind of reminds me, you know, if you remember guys, uh, I think early this year or late last year I was playing Star Trek Online for a little bit, which has elements of this, but it also has the, the really horrible ground missions, and of course the Star Trek storylines, which can be quite fun. But I like this orbiting combat. It's For me, it's very relaxing. And again, it's, I'm not here to do PvP, so I'm here just to play Space Pirate, do some missions, Explore space and see beautiful places and hear cool music. And... Good job, Captain. You've got potential. Yes, I do. Shit. Two battleships breaking away from the enemy fleet. They're stopping the last civilian transport from warping away. Watch your six, Captain. They're bigger and badder than anything you've fought before. 
Captain, we can use electronic countermeasures, ECM, to break the battleship's lock on the civilian transport. Doing so means the battleship will be able to target only one thing, us. There is no other way to save those civilians. They are not capsuleers like you. Their deaths will be final. Yours will be a learning experience. Because I'm a clone. Alright, select the enemy in the overview. Orbit the enemy. We'll do what we can to keep the other hostiles off your back, Captain. Focus on your target. Alright, lock on. Once we deploy the ECM, the battleship will begin firing upon us. Remember, you will have a fresh clone waiting for you once your current body is violently destroyed. Engage violently ECM destroyed. Now. Okay. That's it. The final group of civilians has escaped. You've done good, Captain. We're taking heavy fire, Commander Ferris. Once our ship is destroyed, the pod will soon follow. According to my calculations, our destruction is 99.99% certain. Alright, so it says it's activating my clone and sending it somewhere else. Welcome back to the world of the living, Captain. I hope your death was not too uncomfortable. Your neural data has been transferred to a fresh clone body. But before you stretch your new legs, someone very important would like to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Vesper Calatrix, Air's Vice President of Operations. Commander Ferris spoke highly of your courage under fire. You went out with quite the bang. Since your ship was destroyed in a blaze of glory, Air would like to provide you with a new one. I will enable your station services panel so that you may board the ship provided to you by Air. Try not to blow this one up so quickly, but if you do, you can acquire a new Corvette at any station. Nice. All right, so we're going to board my Corvette. Now this is where I left off my other character that I was originally starting because I was trying to get the performance issues fixed, Your which I did. Adventure will looks like prove less explosive. We have a lead on who attacked the cloning facility, and we want you to follow up on it. Considering your recent experience, you're the perfect pilot for the job. I've sent you a module that will help you on the next leg of your journey. Perfect. All right, I went and got coffee. And this is the character that I actually want to play, so I switched over. So I'll continue to do the uh, the rest of this. Uh, it's not a first impressions video. Whatever. This is a let's play video. I'm testing. So let's play in 2023. So I've been given this Corvette. And I've also been given this um, mining laser module. So Aurora is asking... Aurora, excuse me, is saying... How will a mining module help our investigation? One of our agents in the field has intercepted a strange signal at one of our mining sites, but we're having trouble locating its source. We want you to investigate the signal. But if we're being watched, and I suspect we are, we don't want anyone to know we're on to them. You'll look just like another member of the mining fleet. Okay. Julie noted, Miss Calatrix. Captain, you can fit the module to your ship by accessing the fitting window from the Neocom. Okay, so they've shown me an icon here. I have no idea what Neocom stands for. Um, fitting. Let's fit your new module in a free slot. Oh, I vaguely remember this. Okay. Click and hold the mining laser upgrade. Then 
drag it. Now, bring the module online. In the fitting window, click on the offline module to bring it online. It appears you do not currently possess the skill necessary to use this module. Hardly surprising. You still have much to learn. Please direct your attention to the icon on the display that I have highlighted for you. Hover your mouse over the warning icon in the fitting window. You can add the missing skill to your training queue here. So I'm missing Mining Upgrades 1. And if I remember correctly, this is the game that you can actually do offline skill leveling as long as you've set the skills to be being learned. So if it's something that's going to take like 24 hours, you can set it, go do other things, come back in 24 hours, and it will actually have finished. So we're going to add this to the queue. It says required skill 1 hour 7 minutes. Now, access the skill window from the Neocon. Open the skills window, which is going to be up here. Skills are essential for all capsuleers in New Eden, as they serve as the primary measurement of one's growth. A more highly skilled pilot will be most formidable indeed. Training a new skill takes time as the neural pathways of your brain are rewired. The complexity of this rewiring can be measured through skill points. You have enough unallocated skill points to train the required skill. So it says I have, so a no. thousand, I have a thousand unallocated skill points. It says apply unallocated skill points. Now, all you have to do is confirm that you wish to use those skill points. You are about to apply 988 skill points to train the following skills. Is that, is that like XP? The training required for your new module is complete. Your skill queue is now... I should point out Oops. that you can train skills while soon. doing other things. It's a good strategy to always have something training. I guarantee other capsuleers will be doing just that. We wouldn't want you to fall behind your peers, would we? To that end, I've sent the air skill plan to your AI. Normally, you would have received it as part of your capsular training program starter package, but your training was violently disrupted, to say the least. Select the air skill plan. Hang on, this is like in the way. This, I feel like this looks a lot different than the last time I played this, which was, again, four or five years ago. I see something up here called Certified Plans or Personal Plans. Skill plans designed to optimize your skill towards your chosen career path. Recommended for new capsuleers who need some guidance. That's me. That's cool, so I guess you have the option to either choose a path that they've chosen with some predefined stuff in it, or you can go off the rails and just do your own thing once you've gotten all right, so this is a skill plan to get started. Your career is first complete your air skill plan training. Miss Calatrix's advice is sound. You should always have a skill in training. Let's start with this new one. And may it be the first of many. All right, so what is it going to teach me? Milestone skill. Milestone module. Small armor repair, repair systems. Start training. Start training the skill plan by adding to your training queue. By the way, guys, this is behind my head. Uh, it will train as many of the skill levels it specifies as is possible. The more skills you acquire, the stronger you'll be. As you continue to grow as a capsuleer, you can adjust your skill acquisition to achieve your desired goals. I think this is where the disconnect with new players is going to happen when you come into this because there are so many skills, as I remember... Um, I remember it being very overwhelming the last time I looked at it, but I don't remember there being this streamlined here. We're going to guide you down some specific paths the last time I tried, which if this is something new, this is brilliant because this is a, a great way to get new players involved and say, hey, we're going to take the heavy weight off your bird, off your shoulders, make this a little more palatable and sort of guide you through the process. Now, close the windows crowding your screen. <laughs> it would be rather comical if you fail to see a threat hurtling right towards us. Because of an untidy display. Sure. But it's also telling me to select a career path, but it hasn't prompted me to do so yet. Um, 
So maybe we'll wait for that later. But I like this because um, explorers are cartographers and archaeologists. Enforcers are bounty hunters. Industrialists are miners, manufacturers, and haulers. Soldiers of fortune are like fleet-based things. All right, well, let's just close this. Let us online your mining laser upgrade. Now that you have the necessary skill to use it, you can do this from the fitting window. Okay, go back to the fitting window. Turn the module online. Click it. Well done, Captain. You can now close the fitting window. Okay. Looks like you're ready to roll, Captain. Our agent will rendezvous with you at the mining site. Keep your eyes open and watch your six. This is New Eden, after all. You never know what danger is lurking around the next Stargate. Dun dun. dun. Miss Calatrix is right. Time is of the essence. I suspect something nefarious might be occurring at the air mining site. Undock from the station so we can begin our journey there. I like my ship. Looks pretty cool, guys. scenarios that could explain the mystery signal air discovered at the mining site. According to my calculations, the probability that the situation is unrelated to the attack on the cloning facility is exceptionally small. One in 37 million to be exact. Let us make haste and walk to the site immediately. Okay. Click the warp to location button to travel to your next destination. Space station looks dope. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I'm assuming this is all part of like the tutorial. engines flared down the scale of air's mining operation is rather impressive for such a young corporation they must be remarkably well funded it is little wonder that miss calatrix would suspect espionage further speculation will have to wait we're being hailed by that orca copy that you must be the fresh meat vesper told me to expect Elias Peltonen's a name, mining's a game. But you're not just here to mine, are you? We're here to assist in any way we can with locating the source of the unusual signal you've intercepted. Unusual's one way of putting it. Pain in my ass is another. The signal's bouncing around these asteroids like a fetto hopped up on a bad booster. Can't get a lock on its source with all these rocks in the way. Miss Calatrix has outfitted us with a mining laser upgrade that should clear several of those rocks away. Good old Vesper, always ten steps ahead. Now, let's put that bad boy to use. All right. Change overview tab. Best way to blend in is by getting your hands dirty with the crew. Some miners fly solo, but a project this big isn't exactly a one-man show. Sometimes the only way to get shit done is with a fleet. I bet this is the first time you mind with a crew. No offense or anything, you just got that shiny new pod smell on you. Follow my lead and you'll be mining like a pro in no time. All Let's right. start with that asteroid over there. So select the asteroid. I like how there was the general targets mining. All right, so click the if asteroid. Your competence matches your confidence. We are in good hands indeed, Mr. Peltonen. Okay, approach Captain, the asteroid. Let's approach the this ship looks cool, guys. Please, call me Elias. Mr. Pelton and makes me feel like an old man. My old man, specifically. 
miserable son of a bitch. Just about spat in my face when I left his crusty old Caldari corp to make my own way. Sincerest apologies, Elias. Our first name basis shall commence immediately. <laughs> Good. I like to keep things informal here. It keeps morale up. This crew's full of people like me, following the siren song of sweet, sweet independence. Doesn't hurt that the money is good, too. Money good is good. Money good is better. Money good is best. Alright, I'm assuming when I get in range, I'm going to want to click this. It doesn't actually tell me. Oh, here it is. Optimal range within 10 clicks. So I'm assuming once I'm Captain, in 10 kilometers. We're now within range of the asteroid. We should stop here. Lock target. How do I stop my ship? Now is the time to activate your minor module, Captain. The length of the module's activity, most commonly known as a mining cycle, will impact the amount of ore you collect. For now, I recommend allowing the module to run in full cycles to obtain the highest yield possible. All right, let me really reread that. The length of the module's activity, the mining cycle will impact the amount of ore you collect. Okay, so just click it. So it's shooting out a, a beam. There's something spectacular about a fresh asteroid, isn't there? Play your cards right, and that giant hunk of rock becomes a giant pile of riches. You can view your very own pile of rocks, as Elias puts it, in your cargo hold. It's actually ore, not rocks. But I assume Elias is resorting to basic linguistic wordplay, a very human tendency. Access your cargo hold in the inventory to view the ore. It might not look like much, so but that's not just a pile of ore. It's a pile of possibilities. You can sell it, refine it, trade it. The choice is yours. Now. Alright, I quit my inventory a little bit too soon because it cut him off, so I wonder if there's going to be... Is depleted. Harvesting resources is one of the best ways to earn money in New Eden. And if you're going to make it as a capsuleer, the one thing you got to know is that money is king. Hell, with enough isk, you'll be able to buy yourself a sweet ride like that venture over there. That's one down. And now, on to the next. Okay. Follow me, Captain, and stick close. This it's kind of annoying how the uh, the um, voiceovers get cut off when you click. Like, if you've clicked the objective too soon, it automatically, rather than having the next button, be you the... better hustle, or my guys will drain that asteroid dry before you get there. Activate. If you've got an afterburner, now's the time to use it. Yep. So we got to get within 10 kilometers, I believe. Lock on. Orbit. And... Just like that ship. last asteroid. Once yep, yep, I got it. See, but the thing is, is like, I clicked Looks the like mining... Looks like you're natural at this. And it, it cut him off. Vesper will be offering you my job soon. Elias, are there any words of wisdom you find particularly valuable for new miners? Oh, man. Where to start? First off, you gotta know the difference between raw ore and refined minerals. What we're doing right now is mining ore in its raw state. For someone just learning the ropes, selling that ore is the quickest way to make isk. But you can also reprocess ore into minerals. Take Tritanium, for example. You can't find that stuff in the wild. You've got to get your hands on some raw ore, like Feldspar, and then refine it into Tritanium. You can sell those minerals or use them to build your own ships or equipment. Ah, I could build my own you ships and equipment. I never got station. into crafting before. That sounds get cool. Way more efficient yields from their ore. So that's something you can work towards. The asteroid is depleted. Another asteroid. We better close in on that rock then. Let's roll.
man, visually, I gotta say, this game just looks freaking amazing. Like I said, for 20 years old... Nothing bad to say, man. I am missing a notebook, though. The signal is exceptionally strong in this location. The signal appears to be emanating from the center of this asteroid. Target the asteroid and then lock onto it. I forgot I got a lock on. You can break this baby apart using... Just like that. We can whittle away at this asteroid without damaging whatever's broadcasting that signal. About to find out. I do not remember there being a tutorial like this the last time I played. Is there any way to know, like, how much of the asteroid is left to be mined? Holy shit. <gasps> what is I think this? we just found what we're looking for. Artifact, baby. What is that? The signal source appears to be that wrecked frigate. This particular model is a Dramiel. Most notably, it bears a striking resemblance to the ships that attack the cloning facility. Let's prepare to take a closer look. Alright, so we're supposed to switch back to the general tab. The fact that the wreck is isolated leads me to believe that the Dramiel was sent to this location to serve as a scout ship. Okay. Select it. Well, we're not going to get any solid answers all the way over here. Let's move in. Okay. Here we go. I gotta admit, my, my curiosity has peaked, everybody. What are we getting into? The signal is strongest in the vicinity of the Dramiel's cargo hold. Okay. I do love the feeling of striking gold. Go There's grab a black it box. Is. It appears to be a black box, a device designed to survive the destruction of the vessel carrying it. Such boxes can be used to record vital flight data, but also to store valuable items. Okay. That's nice and all, but can you open it? All right, I'm orbiting that vessel right now. Something I vaguely remember last time is you can set the orbit distance. Yeah, here it is. Keep it range, a thousand meters, orbit at a thousand meters. I vaguely remember some of these controls from a few years ago. Um, Negative, next. Elias. Captain, the box is protected by multiple layers of encryption. While it's theoretically possible to hack into such a container, you will need significantly more training in that skill before attempting such a feat. Okay. Don't think it's safe to crack it open here anyway. Where there's smoke, there's fire. One scout ship might mean they got friends lurking nearby. If we could trace that signal, so could someone else. Better get the box and whatever's in it back to Vesper. She'll know what to do. All right, select the station highlighted on your overview, Durapent 7. Elias is correct, Captain. The box may contain the answers we need to discover why those unidentified ships 
attacked the cloning facility, and why one was spying on this mining site. Okay. So I've aligned myself to the laboratories. I don't want you out there alone. I'll send some of my best pilots back with you. Safety and numbers and all that. Okay. Wisely stated, Elias. Well armed company will be most welcome. I do what I can. If someone went to the trouble of protecting whatever's in that box, it must be something valuable. And I bet whoever sent that scout ship will be real salty that we got our hands on it. Stay sharp, Captain. What if that's the same guy who did the voiceover for Everspace 2? Because it sounds vaguely familiar. Let's dock at the station. I'm certain Vespa is more than eager to see what we've found. Quick commercial break, everyone, to give a shout out to our first official guild officer, Bubblonia, as well as all of the guild champions, and of course, all of the members who help keep me on the air full time. To join as a member, simply click that join button below and pick your tier, but you can also support with super chats on any live stream or premiere, or super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video. Welcome back, Captain. Elias tells me you've brought a gift. I did. Indeed we have, Miss Calatrix. And this gift comes wrapped in several layers of complex encryption. I'll pass that box along to our expert hackers. If they can't crack it open, no one can. Thank you for finding it. Air is once again in your debt. Elias also informs me that you're carrying a fair amount of ore. We can take that off your hands in exchange for some isk. Mind if I take a look? Open your inventory. Captain, open your ship's cargo hold so Miss Calatrix can see what you've mined. Select your cargo hold. In order to sell the ore, you must first transfer it from the cargo hold to your item hanger. Click and drag the ore to your item hanger. Now, let's switch over to the item hanger. Select the ore to see what you can do with it. Right click, okay. Sell this item. In this instance, we want to sell it to Miss Calatrix. Okay. Press the sell button. Nearly done. All that's left is to confirm the sale by selecting the appropriate button. In this instance, that's a nice haul you've got there. I've transferred the ISK to your wallet. I think you'll find I've been more than generous. Sure. In your wallet, you can view the total balance of ISK in your possession. Okay. Your recent market transactions will show you how much ISK you acquired by selling the ore. Okay. Oh, and it tracks your 30 days income and the everything. The highlighted entry shows how much money you received from air in exchange for the ore. The wallet offers a wealth of information. It provides a convenient location to view your recent transactions, track your market history, or audit your accounts. Whenever an item is sold in New Eden, a tax is applied to that sale. The market entry displays your most recent transaction tax. Once you've finished gazing at your newfound riches, close your wallet and inventory. It's time we turned our attention to a more pressing issue. The mysterious box we discovered at the mining site. Captain, I trust you'll keep quiet about the wrecked scout ship. So long as whoever was spying on us hasn't realized we found it, Air will have the upper hand. Okay. As good as they are, It'll take some time for my team to hack through the encryptions on the box. You might as well use this time to explore what New Eden has to offer. Have you checked out the agency yet? It's the best way to find things to do. Find activities to suit your interests. Miss Calatrix is right, Captain. In the agency, you'll be able to peruse a variety of activities, many of which will help you grow as a capsuleer. 
Oh, this is brilliant. So they've broken things down into the types of things too. Encounters, exploration, resource harvesting. Oh, if this is great. If mining tickled your fancy, as the saying goes, you might be interested in viewing the agency's dedicated resource harvesting section. As you can see, there are a variety of options available to you. If you enjoyed your time mining with Elias, you might find asteroid belts and ore anomalies worthy of pursuit. Okay. Elias spoke highly of your knack for mining, almost as highly as Balin did of your prowess in combat. It's clear you've got potential, Captain. I can put you in touch with a few people who can help you grow that potential into something great. You can find them in the agency under Career Agents. So that's kind of cool. I'm looking here. Epic arcs, storyline, missions, program agents, so career agents. I suggest you take a moment to familiarize yourself with what each career agent has to offer. They specialize in various forms of combat, industry, and exploration. Missions provided by career agents offer a variety of rewards, including new skills, ships, modules, and money in the form of ISK, making them both lucrative and educational. No matter what path you choose, you will find a career agent who can help you walk it. You can even explore multiple paths if you wish. Once you've chosen an agent, set your destination. Okay, so this is essentially, they're guiding you. I'm, I'm very quickly, you can see here, it's like when you pick one, it says, um, as an example, the enforcer, um, before heading this creation, it's recommended that you start training this air certified skill plan called the Air Gillant Enforcer. It is not required, but it will unlock useful ships and modules and improve your effectiveness over time. And if I went with like um, industrialist, it tells me to start going producer and explorer, so on and so forth. Though, where would I. Air certified, where did I see that at? Ah, here's here's where it was. Right, so here's where it actually tells you to pick one of these plans to start learning. So right now it's tracking a skill plan called Air. Okay. All right, well, I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do now in terms of... Um, you know, I, I've got my footing under me, and and I know. Okay, so he's even more. Oh, cool! And then there's videos that show you the different, um. Like, like let's play the video on Enforcer. Eve to me is basically freedom. It's a giant open universe where you can do whatever you want. You can have really relaxed, slow-paced stuff where you can take it easy. Or you can be on the edge of your seat, shaking, making split-second decisions. This is Eve. You know, it's a crazy universe where anything can happen, and however you want to do it, go for it. All right. Um, there's a lot of information to assimilate here so no matter what path you choose you will find a career agent who can help you gotcha it. gotcha gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah so i'm like it's according to my thing here i'm close to an hour in but i've got to edit it down a little bit here um i'm going to be winding this video down here because the rest of this is going to be me sort of digging in learning a little bit more um and seeing kind of what exactly what i want to do um for the next part of this. I, I could say this, um, I really like the tutorial they've got here. Um, I'm, I'm, I do have previous experience with this game because I, I have played it a couple of times, but again, the last time was four or five years ago and then four or five years before that. So I don't have, like, I have vague memories um, of things in this game. So some of this feels a little bit familiar, 
But again, I'm coming into this now 20 years in to this game in 2023 going and looking at this and going, hey, it's all streamlined now. What's it like for new players coming in in 2023? And I really like the way they've outlined all this stuff. Now, obviously, I'm barely scratching the surface here with what this game has to offer because there's, as I remember correctly, hundreds if not thousands of skills and there is an overwhelming aspect of that for some people. Um, and if you're a new player coming into this, I feel like they've got a really great tutorial system set up that's going to help you figure out exactly what you want to do, get some ships under your belt, um, learn the basis of the game before you go out there and start really, you know, getting into the universe. Um, I am going to be playing this periodically. Um, I don't have a schedule set up. It's just going to be, you know, here and there. I'll probably stream some of this because now that we're multi-streaming on Twitch and YouTube, I know with Twitch in particular, one of the reasons that I wanted to get back into this, not just because I saw the that video for Lazy PM, but also because I know like with Twitch, there's a pretty good audience for this. So I'd like to see how this is going to do and perform for the channel. And I do want to get some more space stuff, some more sci-fi stuff into my rotation because I do a ton of, of fantasy so I'm always happy to, to do a little bit more in this. I don't know if I'll subscribe at the moment. I do remember if you subscribe, you get like increased skill production. Like, you know, the, the time that it takes to um, learn your skills. Like down here, it says clone state omega tr required for two times trading as training speed. So that is if you subscribe, you get the omega status if you're paying a monthly subscription and you're essentially you're learning your skills at a times two pace. So if I were to want to actually go whole hog in this for three or four months, it might be worthwhile for me to jump in and just buy a block of like three months. I don't know if they do blocks, but usually when I play like Star Wars or the Public or Lord of the Rings Online, it, I'll play like once every 18 months or so. Every 12 to 18 months, I'll play those games. And when I do, I always just come in and subscribe for three months and then just go whole hog. So I don't know exactly what I'm doing here yet, but I do know I like what I see so far for the 2023 presentation. I think it's something that you might enjoy if you like space stuff. So if you like what you've seen here, let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. And of course, stick around. No matter what path you choose. Because I'm going to be doing more of this with some additional videos and additional streams. So check out all the things you need to check out. There's just this channel. There's also the Discord down below, all the other playlists. Multi-streaming on Twitch, so check the links out to that as well if you want to watch over on Twitch instead of here on YouTube. And uh, I'll catch everybody in the next video. And if you know more about EVE and you want to drop tips and hints and things down in the comments below, please feel free to do so because I'm coming into this like a new player and I am interested enough in it that I kind of want to start to look at maybe this is going to be something I start to blend into my 2024 in between everything else I'm doing. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, guys.